All right, folks, uh, joining us now, as promised, is the co-host of Steel and Unger on Sirius XM Radio, Saturdays, 11 a.m. Eastern, if I'm not mistaken. Rick Unger is here. Hello, hey, sir. Always good to see you. Always love having big you here. Big day today. Very big day today. News breaking out all over the place, yeah. as they say. Okay, so you just heard Alan Dershowitz say I that did. this is a monumentally insignificant case, and in 10 years, no one will remember it. You wrote a great piece at uh, Forbes.com that the founding father, at least the headline, founding fathers spinning in their graves over this decision. Yeah. So get. I don't obviously don't entirely agree with Alan. I actually take some of his points. As a as a religious freedom issue, I think he's right. And and I will tell you at the outset, I'm all for being as expansive as we can humanly be when it comes to individuals' religious freedoms. My problem is if you review what the founders felt about corporations, and we have volumes to tell us where they stood on it, then you do begin to see that this did have a constitutional impact because what this decision did, even though they tried very hard to cast it as narrowly as they humanly could, it did give human rights. Only humans can have beliefs, feelings, all the emotions, the all those things. It gave it to a corporation, which is truly nothing more than a legal fiction, a piece of paper that is sitting in a file cabinet in a secretary of state's office in some state. That, to me, not only violates everything in our Declaration of Independence about where our, our rights are, are endowed from, but in the Constitution, where every reference makes it very clear that our, all of our rights in the Bill of Rights are aimed at people, not legal fictions. This is my problem. I, I'm actually extremely supportive of the Greens. They, what he said is right. They are very decent people. I, I yeah, have never questioned them, that. Yeah. They are. They, they have paid their employees well beyond the minimum wage for many years. I got no problem with them. I have no problem with their religious beliefs. My problem is if they felt this way, and that's okay with me, there were other ways they could do business, even having already been a corporation. They could have easily have changed that corporation to a, uh, a, a sole proprietorship or a limited or general partnership and avoided the issue. They would have lost the benefits of the corporate shield when it comes to personal liability, right, sure. and they may have lost some tax benefits, right. but they would have been following their religious but, beliefs. But they, the, the government, who now claims, and, and the Obama administration today, the president's so concerned how this might affect women. First of all, as Dershowitz said, it, it's very unlikely that any women will be affected because I, there are I other agree. ways. Okay. I agree. So, so the demagoguery is starting, but also we had the attorney for Hobby Lobby on, and for the Green family right. specifically, and she said that the, the Solicitor General argued that it would be perfectly acceptable for Hobby Lobby to just disband, don't give any employees any health insurance, and don't give them a raise or any money to help them pay for their own health insurance, and that, would be, would, be and that would be an acceptable alternative to the government. So how, how could they now claim the president's so worried about women when the government but argued, not, just I'm dump not, all health insurance? I'm not talking about the president. I, agree, no, but I, no, but I, I am, do yeah. agree with you. The demagoguery yeah. is going to start yeah. for a very simple reason. When I'm talking to you Legally, about, about corporations yeah. and the importance well, of it, no one cares, okay? You can't make a political case based on, on corporations. Right. It's important to me because I think it's important that we understand the difference between human beings and legal fictions. Uh, but yeah, of course they're going to go that way. Notice I haven't said a word about women's rights. I do agree with Alan. People didn't know in this case that that Hobby Lobby's insurance policy they're going to offer allows all sorts of contraceptive devices, only four, right, only four which the, they the, believe are abortion, are, abortion, yeah, yeah. Uh, are omitted. So I, I would agree with them. I don't think that's too much of a burden to put on somebody. Right. I haven't got a problem with that. My problem right, is what status, it has done okay. for the Supreme Court to abrogate what a corporation is and to abrogate what the founders believed about corpora uh, corporations and what the founders wanted to convey in our Bill of Rights and to extend that to uh, a God given God given yeah. rights. You know what? God, God, -given, God and I, didn't create co but I, corporations. But I don't believe, he created people. Okay, but I don't believe that governments founders, create corporations. Oh, true. But I don't believe that the uh, or people. Yeah, governments create corporations, people form. But I don't believe that the, the founders ever would have envisioned the government dictating to a business owner to do something that violated their religious actually, beliefs. Actually, what the, what the founders would, would not have agreed with is government dictating to an individual to do something that violated their religious beliefs. I agree with that 100%. But they had very little sympathy for corporations. Let me just quickly tell you how a corporation was allowed to exist in the time of the founders. They had a limited lifespan, on average 20 to 30 years. They could only, only 
be involved in the one business that they were pursuing. They were not allowed to own stock in any other corporation. Right there, all of Wall right, Street's right, gone. Right, 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 right. right. And my favorite one, in most states, if a corporation made a political contribution, it was a criminal offense. Okay. I, I get it. That's I, how I, they again, viewed you're, corporations. You're a lot more educated on, on the Founding Fathers' views on corporations than I am. Well, but I, the Supreme Court that. should be. Okay, but, 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 but we're, this, was, this was a test of religious liberty. This was a test it of a business, a, a business that, that would have gone out of business if the government won enforcing them to do something against their religious beliefs. And I, no, I feel based on what have, I do know about the Founding Fathers. Gone out of well, they said they would. They would rather they go out of business than, 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 than acquiesce, and otherwise they would have been fine. Here's what was false about that statement. There were any number of ways they could have done they business. But they would have lost this, they would well, have they lost would, They would have lost that. And here's what's fascinating about it. What the Supreme Court basically said today was in the instance of a closely held corporation by one family, right. the line between them and the corporate entity is so thin mm -hmm. that they can, by attribution, place their religious rights into that corporation. Okay, fine. So that conversely has to mean that that line being so thin that if the corporation incurs a personal liability, if they lose a major lawsuit, well, before today, the, the, the owners were protected. They were protected mm -hmm. from personal liability. If that line is so thin that they can literally transfer their religious beliefs to the corporation, then why shouldn't the corporation be able to transfer that liability to them going the other well, way? Well, that's a whole other issue, But though. there's but, no but, logic but to not. Issue. Yeah. All right. Um, and by the way, um, this... this you know, this case came before the, the nuns, the, the, the yes. sisters uh, case, and, and many others like the sisters who are being forced. Right. So this is, uh, we got a minute on this segment, then we'll get to others in the next segment. But this has to speak, uh, bode well for the nuns it, in their case. It probably has decided it already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, because right. because this people felt this one had the chance of going either way, right. but that was the winner. Yeah. And now it's a matter of time. Assuming it's closely held corporate. I mean, this is where it's going to be fascinating. They've opened the door, and you realize they overturned years of standing law in, in this decision. You know, they're trying to sell it as so narrow, but it did. It clearly overturned because law. Because for the first time ever, we have a government that's trying to impede Doesn't the religious matter. freedom and liberty of, of people. Actually, it's not true. And corporations. We've had many cases where well, religious right. freedom were at issue. All right, so. here we are. Uh, we're coming back uh, with uh, Rick Unger, and we haven't touched on the uh, union. I'm sure you'll want to weigh in uh, on the union uh, case, 5-4 as well. And uh, maybe a little bit, if we have time, on Obama's declaration today that uh, he will solve the immigration problem as much as he can using this because Congress won't act. We're coming back. Don't go away. <laughs>